to our website. Um, these are some meeting expectations that our um, team has been working on. So these meeting expectations you can use to share with your students as you're doing online learning through this way. These are just some common expectations and some things that we have been going over um, that we want our students to go over. So I want to point you these in these directions. These will be on our website um, here in probably the next hour or so. Um, just some little reminders, you know, for our students to keep their microphones off, turn off your webcams until your teacher asks you to, um, good manners, um, you know, wear clothing, all those important things that are <laughs> required for students, um, and don't take pictures of other students, you know, to protect their privacy. So we will be posting these on our website, um, which is our NTI learning website, and you can get to that link and you can also get to Susan's presentation here. Um, she's going to share a bit.ly with you, but I've already posted it on our website. This is our bit.ly for our NTI learning page. That's bit.ly slash FCPSNTI. And if you go underneath our on other online tools, that's where you're going to find right here, Susan's presentation um, to her link. And she's also going to, uh, I'm going to put it in the chat for you, which is a quick link to this um, so that you can get everything that you need to know. Um, and without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Susan. All right. Thank you, Mr. Rayburn. Welcome, everyone. And it is a pleasure to be invited to talk to you today about Desmos integration. Uh, today, I'm going to show you a little something about classroom activities. Uh, Desmos has a great um, new site that they added, uh, especially for uh, distance learning. And so I'm going to show you that today. Uh, first, um, if you look, we've got a chat feature, which I'm going to have open on the side here. So if you have any questions while we're um, going through or you need me to slow down, um, just go ahead and you can type um, in the chat. And Mr. Rayburn has just put the bit.ly that we're going to use today. Um, this is a link actually to my whole website. So for those of you that don't know me, I was a math teacher for 24 years. Uh, in private and public school. I worked at Dunbar High School um, after I was working at Lake Saint Catholic and was there for seven years. I taught one year at Frederick Douglass and then had the opportunity to be the digital learning coach. So I am a math teacher at heart. Um, and when we started at Douglas, we are a one-to-one -one Chromebook school. We uh, were fully integrated in Pearson and so I kind of was baptism by fire. So um, any questions you have about Pearson content, you'll actually see it on this website as well. Um, so, uh, and then if there's anything that we hit today that you want some more help with um, or one-on-one -on -one help, uh, we can Google Meet or Zoom uh, at a different time that works for you. And I'd love to help you one-on-one um, -on -one with anything that comes up. Um, so if you'll go to that bit.ly, so if you're in, outside of your Zoom and you go into the internet and just copy and paste that bit.ly from the chat, um, it's all lowercase, bit.ly's are case sensitive. And then I'm going to, uh, while you're doing that, I'm going to share my screen here so you can see kind of where we're at. Uh, kind of different because you've got the um, whole website here going on while you're on the web for a Zoom. So I'm going to share my desktop here. And there's my pretty kitty. <laughs> now I'm gonna show you my, I'm gonna my chat back to come up here. Make sure you can see here. That bit.ly again is Q Desmos. It's all lowercase um, if you need it. Okay, so here we are in the um, website. This has all of the Desmos and Pearson integration I've done so far. So today we're going to look at um, distancing with Desmos. Um, we're going to offer this again on Thursday as well. Tomorrow I'm going to do uh, one that's just with the Desmos calculator. So if you don't want to get in classroom activities, but you want your students maybe to send you um, work they've done through the Desmos calculator, we're going to talk about that tomorrow. 
Um, so if you'll click on distancing with Desmos, after you go to that bit.ly, that was Q Desmos, um, all in lowercase. We're gonna be working from here today. Um, so I wanted this to kind of be our home base, um, this website, and we'll come back to it in a little bit. So, um, so you kind of have all encompassing Desmos and Pearson things. So I'm gonna click on that. And so here we are in distancing with Desmos. Um, we've got, um, again, mostly we're gonna stick with classroom activities today. Um, I've got a Macintosh computer, so you're gonna see me um, right-clicking a lot to open in a new tab because I don't want any of my tabs to close. Um, and I've got some open already for us today. Uh, but this is the slideshow that we're gonna focus on. So um, that should open if you hover over it. Um, you can click here for the slideshow for you to keep, um, or you can open it from this um, embedded slideshow right here. So we're gonna be following along with that. Um, so I'll give you a second to kind of get that set up. Um, again, this is yours to keep. You can, I try to embed some videos that you can look at later when, when you need it, because uh, I know we're all crazy busy right now. Uh, and while you're doing that, uh, this is the learn.desmos.com is like an amazing website that has everything, um, little short videos, webinars, but this um, we're gonna focus on for a little bit is their um, coronavirus uh, web page that they made. Um, so we're gonna get into that as well today. It's, it's a pretty neat thing and anytime like, this is kind of, this is like the main thing I wanted to show you today and then get more into classroom activities. So if, if you already know how to do classroom activities or um, you need some extra help, I'm gonna have maybe Mr. Rayburn can kind of uh, view the chat there and can throw out some questions for me from time to time. Uh, but if you already know how to set up classroom activities, this is a great site right here to, to look at. Okay, so I'm gonna go into the slideshow. And I am um, just going to click on this for you. I've got a um, activity for us to join right now. So I kind of want you to um, be the student on the student end because um, I've got some neat slides in here. I think that would be good to start with um, when you do a classroom activity in this time right now. So if you'll open up another tab. Um, on your computer. Um, and when you do that, you'll, you're just going to type in student.desmos.com. So if you have Desmos open already, um, you don't have to be a teacher, but I'm going to go to student.desmos.com. And then it's going to open up and I'll put it back on that slideshow for you in a minute. And this is where the class code goes. So I'm going to talk to you about sharing today class codes with your students and how that would work um, in our digital platform. Um, so I want to go back to my slides. So I'll show you. you can see this, but this will pop up when you get your um, activity started. You'll have a slide like this. This is something that you can um, put a link to. It'll have a populated link that you could embed in Google Classroom or your Canvas course um, or um, wherever you're um, LMS is, or you could email it out, or you can just share the code with the instructions like I'm doing right here. So there's a couple different ways to do that. Okay. And when you're getting that set up, I'm actually going to go in and to the teacher view so you can see what that looks like. Um, you don't need a space in here at all, or you can put the space if you want. So I'm in teacher.desmos.com right now. And now I can see that a few of you are entering and doing the work. And this is the neatest part about while you're answering the questions and playing along there um, with those few slides, this is the neatest thing about what we can do with this with distance learning. So I can see progress. We're gonna talk today about what these dots mean um, in the teacher.desmos.com. 
and I'm just going to leave this open while you're doing it, but I can see that uh, Brandon's on slide three. Um, I can anonymize, but I'm not showing this to my students, so um, I can, I can uh, anonymize if I was in my classroom, but I don't need to now. Um, and I can see that Ronnie's on slide two with Michael and Teresa. So good job, you guys. Keep up the good work. Um, and while you're doing that, this is, I'm in the summary view right now, which I'm going to let you finish this and then you can come back to the Zoom. So I get kind of an overview of where everyone is at, but I can go to teacher view and I can um, look and see what your responses are. So I'm going to give you just a few more minutes. Um, I can see Abby's getting started there. Welcome everyone. This first slide that you guys did, um, the how are you, is a, I think a great slide to see, just to test how your students are doing. And I can, uh, when I do an activity, I can, I'm gonna show you later how we can edit activities so that you can hide what, this, so the students can't see what everyone else is putting. So there's a thing where you can click to see how everyone, uh, what everyone's answers are, but there's also a box that we can uncheck so that you can't see any of the answers. So that's pretty neat, um, especially if you're asking for feelings. Um, sometimes students don't want other students to see what that is. But these are great, just kind of fun little sketching or um, scales you can do or thumbs up, thumbs down. Um, and I did not make any of these slides. These, all these slides you're doing right now um, were part of an activity that I found that actually had like 10 or 12 slides and I wanted to use a few of the slides. So I copied it and edited it and, um, and then I added in my own slides. So I'm gonna show you how you can do that today. And I've got almost everybody finished. And then once you're finished, if you'll come back to the Zoom so you can see my teacher um, side of this. I just had LA come in. So we'll let, let them finish up. Depending on what type of questions you ask is going to depend what what we see on the teacher summary side. So I am um, in teacher.desmos.com on my dashboard for this activity. And you wouldn't be able to access this as a student. But when you create your own activity and get it going, which we'll look at today, you can you'll be able to see my view. Something similar to this. All right, we got um, a few more finishing up here. And so again, once you finish, come back to your Zoom screen and we'll talk a little bit about the teacher dashboard real quick and then I'll get to see how you actually are feeling. <laughs> So again, these little dots here are going to have meaning in a little bit. We're going to talk about that, but that's not the only icon you can see on those slides. I'm in this again in the summary section of the teacher dashboard for my particular activity. I can see the code up top. Um, I can a new feature that I just saw today, which I didn't know, is you can add a co-teacher. So if you have a um, if you're in a uh, co-teaching class or you have um, maybe a administrator that you want to add, you can um, actually add them here with the new uh, co-teacher sharing function, which is pretty neat. Um, we've got, if I were to do this live, so one thing we're going to talk about today is if you're doing like a class through Google Meet or a Zoom and you want maybe to have uh, just some interaction with your students. I know my 
my son is an eighth grader at Beaumont and he has been doing some Google meets and zoom meetings with his teachers, um, which is pretty neat. But uh, if you would want to do that, there are features on here that you could use to see how your students are doing. Um, and you could use some anonymized features, the pacing, um, the pausing. Um, but if you're just using it as an embedded activity, integrating it into your LMS, for um, some work, it doesn't have to be live at all. They can, you can assign it and have it due um, in a few days. Uh, but you could see the time they entered by name. Um, I can see how many students entered. Um, and then this is the really neat thing. We've got everybody finished here. I'm gonna show you the teacher view of, um, and we'll have this all in our slides in a little bit, of uh, the dashboard here. So now I can see overall responses. So this looks great. Everybody seems really excited. Um, and this had a few entries here. Um, you had the responses there, and then we had some um, open response. So it looks like everybody's doing well. Um, I can snapshot too, if I wanna share out, um, you know, with a, t a parent or, um, on your LMS platform, a great response. You can actually use the snapshot tool um, to capture what your students did. So um, that might be neat to send home and say, I loved this graph that your, that your child did, or you wanna send something back to them. Um, that's great too. I can actually like click on Ashley's and I can look at hers. And this is the neatest thing that I've seen um, so far. This is in beta version. Um, it's a comment. So I can leave Ashley some lesson feedback, which we're gonna um, look at in a little bit today. But now I can go over here um, and I can type my Zoom stuff. I can send feedback to Ashley. And then the next, um, um, time I can't talk and <laughs> and type at the same time um, you want to make it specific to that task um, but she can come back in and look at that so I'm going to show you how you can turn that back on I think that's a really neat feature um, beta means it's in test mode so um, they're testing that and they actually want your feedback on that too so I can go in and do that as well so I can click on individual students I can also overlay um, to see what everybody's response is. It's kind of neat when you do graphs like that. But um, so that's the teacher view. Um, and so I can go in and look at everyone's pictures. Um, Josh Rayburn, overachiever, nice. So um, this is great. And it does have a drawing feature, which is really neat. Um, looks like we've got some middle school in today. So that's great. I've got some great resources for you. And the overlay is always fun in this one. <laughs> Um, and then we can look and see where um, we are in terms of the graphing calculator, which again, I'm gonna do some stuff on the graphing calculator tomorrow. Um, so if your responses were kind of on um, the non-Ninja end, you um, feel free to join us tomorrow at 1.30 for um, the calculator. Um, and then as well, here's the classroom activity. So, um, it looks like we wanna look at how we can integrate those activities and um, new to Desmos and everything. Good, yeah, I love it. So I can look at where my students are individually as well. So this is great. Thank you guys for participating in that, okay? Um, and then the last thing here, I can see a student view um, of responses. And then also this is the snapshot view. So I can drag in here. If I was doing a live version, I think I would use snapshots a little bit more. Um, but here I can go in and um, I've got that snapshot. I can even add photos um, from somewhere else. So it's pretty neat. Okay, so let's go back to now. We can, you can actually close this if you want to. Um, since it was in student mode, you can close off your uh, student desmos.com because we're going to get into some more uh, a different desmos here in a minute and let me get back to my slideshow um, 
So we're first going to talk about some um, really great features at this, um, on this website, which is um, the Desmos Corona site. And um, so if you will go into your slideshow there, or you can, you can click on this link, or you can just type in learn.desmos.com um, backslash coronavirus, um, and it will take you, um, don't go to this bit.ly because that is the wrong one now, it's all lowercase. Um, I'll fix that up in a minute, but I can click on here and it will take me to their site. So again, this is learn.desmos.com backslash coronavirus. And this is their new site. Um, they have um, shoot short tutorials here, webinars that you can sign up for. Um, they have an activity clinic. Um, you can schedule an appointment there. Um, but this is the one thing I wanna show you. We got a lot of middle school teachers in here today, um, but all the way up through calculus, they have some uh, collections of things they thought would work well for distance learning. Um, if you wanna click on those, um, we could just maybe look at um, sixth grade for a minute. Again, I'm going to open in a new tab here. Um, and these are just not by content. So I'm going to show you in a little bit how you can search for activities by content. So if this is not, if, if you just want your students to just try a Desmos activity and you don't mind that it, it might not go with your content, um, this is perfect for you. So um, here we have balloon float. They've got a coordinate plane activity with a bullseye. Love the marble slides. Those are a lot of fun. And then a point collector. So these are just some of the activities that um, they have. Now, right now, probably over here in the left-hand corner, you're not signed in. So if you want to right now, you can hit sign in and then you need to use your Google Actually, I'm going to sign out so you can see it. It's out of the way. So when you sign in, you don't need to create an account. So you just sign in, and then you want to sign in with Google. Your single sign-on um, works for um, what Fayette County has set up for us. So we're good. And then you should see your name in the corner there. This is now your, your um, teacher account. So now you've got full access to everything at Desmos. All of this is free. Everything in Desmos is free. It's amazing. So um, these are some, again, of those distance learning um, by grade level, just if you wanted to play around. All of this would be probably things that, that would be a review for our students at this point. But you can play with them. Um, just by clicking on them. We're going to get into that in a minute. I'm, I've actually got a few I want to show you and some other examples. Um, but you'll see over here we've got featured collections. We've got, um, this is somewhere we're going to go in a minute, your own collections that we're going to look at, custom activities you're going to do today, and a history of where you're at. Um, so those are um, and then search for an activity up here. So kind of around here, if you haven't used Desmos before, is where we'll be at today. Okay. Um, back on their distance learning, there's a global math art contest right now, which is neat. Um, they have a great Facebook group if you're on Facebook, and they also have Twitter. Um, you can also email them if you need some support. Um, and then these are some of the new things that um, I mentioned just a minute ago. Um, you can add co-teachers, which is a new feature. Um, they have starter screens. So starter screens are like that first screen I shared with you today where you kind of um, can get to know the feeling of your kids and, and interact with them on, a, on that kind of um, mental health level. Um, and then also check your understanding. So if you click on starter screens, It'll take you back into your teacher.desmos.com and you should be signed in now and it'll show you different types of starter screens. Um, so this is their screens for check-in um, that we use today. So you can click on that. Um, this is a check for understanding screen. 
um, that you would kind of put in the middle or the end of a lesson. Um, and all of these say you can copy and paste into your activities. So we're gonna look at how you can do that today. Um, so I'm gonna show you that. Um, this one is um, just uh, tasks about fractions, which I think is pretty neat. And then this is some of their, pos uh, some of their popular screen, favorite screens that they've put in there. Um, so you can take a look at those as well. So you would just click on those to take a look at them. Um, and then if you like them, or you think you wanna save it for later, you can actually add them to your first collection or maybe not your first collection if you're, uh, if you're good with Desmos. So over here at the plus sign, you can actually um, add to a collection and start a new collection. Um, so I have one that I already put this one in called NTI activities. Um, but that plus sign will let you add to your collection. You can share out collections with your colleagues or co-teachers, um, et cetera. So um, that's uh, pretty neat. You can just click on new collection and type what you want that new collection to be and then hit save. Um, so if that's something you wanna start later, and then you'll see it show up in your collections in teacher.desmos.com. I'm gonna hit the backspace because I forgot to right click. <laughs> So I'm gonna go back to my coronavirus. And this was the written feedback. Um, so this is where you can uh, send students comments um, about their work in an activity. And then when they return to the activity, which they can get back in when they go to student.desmos.com, which I'll show you how to do that in a minute, then um, they, they can see your feedback, which is pretty neat. Um, and that again is in the beta. So you actually have to, we're gonna talk about how you can turn this feature on. You, you have to actually turn this feature on to use it because it's in the beta version. Okay, so if, if you know a lot more about classroom activities and this was the, like one of the main things I wanted to show you today, but if you wanna stick with me, we're gonna talk about how then to share these out and how you can edit and copy and paste different slides make, and even make your own activities um, for the rest of our time together today. Okay, so on our next slide, on the slide deck, um, this, is how, this is the website for how to get your started with activities. So if you're brand new to classroom activities, um, this is a good website to take a look at with all that free time I'm sure you have not. <laughs> this NTI work is more work than when we actually work in at school. Um, you can assign students um, a classroom activity to work at your own pace during NTI, or if you wanna do what I'm doing right now, you could do it. You could have them do an activity um, while you're in a Google Meet or Zoom session. Um, but the neat features I think during this, this NTI time is you can, see how they're feeling, you can leave feedback, um, you get feedback in real time or later on your teacher dashboard. Um, you could even have them play a polygraph together where they can actually interact together during a Zoom or a Meet. Um, and one other thing is you could find some activities that maybe would help with them understanding what flattening the curve means um, with logistics or exponential curves, okay? Um, I also put in here how to find and assign a classroom activity video. So if later you wanna watch that, if there's something that you missed or I'm going too fast for you, um, you can come back and this is basically just the basic beginning steps of how to do a classroom activity. Um, and so I put the video in there as well. Okay. So we're gonna talk today about finding a classroom activity in just a minute. Um, and we mentioned already that you can organize your activities through collections. So when you find an activity you like, you can add it to a collection or share it with other teachers. Um, and what I wanted to show you now is where I have activities by content. So this is, might be stretching it, but we can go back to, if you go back to that Q Desmos bit.ly, or you can do it later if you want and just watch right now. Um, and you scroll down to the bottom, what you'll see is by topic of Pearson, and this is for high school, but this summer I'm gonna be doing um, 
the middle school, six to six to eight, and then next semester I'll be working on the elementary school. But we have by topic, here's some algebra one topics, um, which might go if you're teaching algebra to your um, sixth, seventh, or eighth graders, you could go in here. Um, but these are all our topic um, content sheets that have Desmos activities linked into them. So you, these are open for anybody um, to look at. There's geometry ones if you want to try and find a geometry activity um, and algebra two as well. Um, but we're going to add to that with um, the middle school this summer. If you have no idea what activity you should use and you're teaching in middle school right now, shoot me an email um, and I will find one for you. Just give me a content and we'll find a really good one for you. Or if you want to use those ones that we saw on the coronavirus, the learn.desmos.com um, backslash coronavirus, that's a great place to go to. So this was, this again is back at Q Desmos, that bit.ly. Um, and it has all again of that content. Um, you don't need the online assessment stuff, but um, it has, um, there's the first steps video for classroom activities too. So um, feel free to, to use those if you're trying to find a content specific activity or let me know and I'll find one for you. Okay, and then once you find one, you can put it into a collection. Oops, sorry. Um, okay, so we're gonna go in and, and find an activity um, that you might like. You can use the one I'm using or you could find one yourself um, that you might wanna use for the next few weeks because I want this to be um, productive for you. Um, but let's say it's too long or there's a few slides or how do I know? So we're going to go in and find an activity and then we're going to learn how to copy and edit an activity. Um, this is a web page down here that you could look at later. Um, but I want to, um, maybe I want to add that starter screen to an activity like I did. So we're going to do all of that encompassing in one. Okay, so if you will go to your teacher.desmos.com. I hate that I can't interact with you guys right now that I'm trying to get all this in before. Um, so, oops, that was my student one, sorry. So here's my teacher one. I'm gonna go back here. So I'm on teacher.desmos.com and I wanna find an activity. You could type in anything you want right here. So let's say I wanna do exponential. Um, curve or I just type in exponential, you'll see some stuff pops up and maybe I want to do, um, I don't know, you could look at a marble slides one. This looks like fun. Okay. Yeah. Apparently I like it. <laughs> so it's in a lot of my collections. Um, I, I think marble slides are a lot of fun. It's kind of like a little video game. Um, so I want to look at marble slides. So this came up when I searched exponential. Uh, it's going to give me some more activities like this where it's at. Um, if I scroll down, it'll show me this is going to be important later when we go to create a classroom activity. You're going to need the class code. Um, we don't want to do that just yet because we want to edit it, maybe. But let's say I, I want to really look at this, and, and that's what you should do before. You can do a student preview, but also I want to show you here up top, there's a teacher guide. So you can look at the teacher guide and click on that. I'm going to open in a new tab. And this will give me a teacher guide I can print out. This is great if you're doing it in the classroom, but also like what do I have to have set up before I, I put this out onto the internet or onto my LMS. So this is a great, um, we've got marble slides, it shows all of this, gives you kind of an overview, and then any notes that I wanna make, um, maybe for, you know, if I'm going to use it again or something I found that was happening. Um, but this is great to have when you're in the classroom and you can jot down notes of something like this slide took too long, um, but it has great teacher moves. So um, this again is basically for when you're in the classroom doing it, but it's good to look over as well. And then I can take notes on it and, um, and they might talk about like what students' responses are gonna look like and have sample responses, which is great too, kind of like a answer key for you. So that's in the teacher guide. 
So that's up in the top here, in the top corner of that uh, activity, okay? But then I'm gonna come down here and I wanna look at the student preview. So I wanna go through the slides um, and I wanna look at the student preview. So, and I can play around with this too. It's not gonna hurt anything, which is great, but this is how you would see it. But let's say I don't want them to do like all these slides. Um, I don't like it, it's too long. Um, and I wanna do some editing. So we're gonna look at that in just a minute. Um, but I definitely suggest go through the teacher guide and the student preview beforehand. But let's say I, I like this, but I wanna edit it. If you like it, you're ready to go. So you would go to create class code, and which we're gonna talk about in a minute, and you're ready to share out to your students. But let's say I wanna, I wanna edit this, like it's just a little bit too long, um, or I don't like some of the slides. So I'm gonna go to the snowman right here at the top. So if you scroll back up to the top, we had, this is add to your collection again, and we looked at the teacher guide, and I wanna go now to the snowman right here. And this is where I can share an activity, not with my students. This is to share an activity with a teacher. Um, the only thing you're sharing with the students is a class code, which is down at the bottom there. But I wanna go to copy and edit. So um, I'm gonna click on that. Some activities, by the way, will not allow you to copy and edit. Um, and now I am in what's called activity builder. So if I go up here to the top, you'll see now the URL says teacher.desmos.com backslash activity builder. Um, and again, that was just from clicking the snowman at the top and going to copy and edit. And now this is where all the magic happens. And this is where you'll go to if you wanna create your very own um, activities from scratch. Um, I'd rather just copy from someone else. <laughs> so, uh, but it is fun to create your own activity too. So let's say I think this is way too long um, and I don't want these challenge slides at the end. So I can, um, I don't want this. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna click over here on the right, almost looks like a PowerPoint or Google slide. And I'm gonna click on the snowman and then I'm gonna delete the screens. And so this will, I wanna delete all of these challenge screens because they're too challenging for my students or I just don't want it to be that long. And I'm gonna go in here, delete screens. I wonder if, I'm gonna try something I haven't tried before. I wonder if I can delete these. No, nope, I can't delete them at the same time. So we have to delete them this way. Oh, not that one, challenge slides, there we go. And then I don't want the free play either. So that I deleted some screens. Let's say I wanna add a screen. I wanna add that starter screen. I forgot to copy it. Um, we could have copied it first and put it in and you can edit as many times as you want. So I'm gonna go in here back into another tab and show you how to do that real quick. And I can have multiple tabs open with teacher.desmos.com. But let's say I wanna embed into my activity a starter screen. So I'm gonna to go to my collections and find my starter screens for checking in. And so I'm gonna show you how to do this in a little bit, but how to get to all this and click on the screen. So here's my screens for checking in. Oops. And I'm gonna go down here and these are different screens that I can use. Um, here is the one that I use today. How are you feeling today? So um, I like this screen. Um, I like the little robot. So I'm gonna click on it. And then there's a little copy, looks like a duplicate up here next to the student screen preview. So when you're in a um, activity, you can copy any screen and put it into another one. And I'll go through these steps again in a little bit, but let's say I wanna copy this screen. Now I can paste it into Activity Builder. So then I can go back to my Activity Builder and go to the top here. And I'm literally just hitting my Control V or my Command Paste, and I can move these around just like I would in a PowerPoint or a Google slide. And now I've got that, that um, 
right in there. So the, the easy part is the copy and, or is the paste, excuse me. The hard part is the copy. So again, when you wanna copy something um, from one activity to another, you, don't, you can have two windows open like I did, or you can copy it and then it'll be saved in your, basically your clipboard to then paste into another activity later when you copy and edit. Um, or you can open two like I did. <laughs> okay, so that's how you could add those. Um, this one's kind of a neat one. You can, um, where are you at today on a coordinate plane? Again, I just hit up here at the copy screen. And then I go to the activity I want to paste it in. And I literally just hit control V. And so maybe I do two or one. And again, to delete screens, I can just delete by using the snowman feature on that slide. Okay. Once I've got that how I want it, I can change the name of it. So if I want to use it, I want to say this is for Algebra 2, um, or I want to put something like their block schedule or, their, or your name. Um, I think with everything that's going on with parents, they need, with all the different things that they've got coming into them, maybe this would be good to have your name in there as well. Um, so you can rename it again, just click on that and it'll, you'll be able to edit it. And then you can go to next over here and, um, you're then going to be able to, um, save that and publish it. So publish is what you want to do right there, or you can save a draft and come back later. Um, this is a neat new beta feature as well. I wanted to show you which I am loving is their scientific calculator will appear on the top screen every time. So no matter what they're doing, if they want to do some quick calculations, um, it will enable a scientific calculator on their screens. Okay. Um, you don't want to put private here. You want to make sure that, um, oh, excuse me, this is for private view in terms of sharing out to the world of Desmos. So if you don't want to do that, you can click private. Um, or if you don't care if anybody sees it with a link, you can put it here. Hi, hey, Susan. Yes, sorry. Is it possible to edit the words, like the instructions and everything for the yes. teachers that do Spanish immersion? Yes, yes. So you can, um, oh, sorry. You can uh, type in here. You can click on these. You can change the um, type of answer and we'll go through that when we go into creating your own activity too. I'll point out more of those features but yeah there's tons of stuff you can do here in activity builder so um, starting you can start from scratch or you can change stuff in here as well does that does that answer your question I believe so okay and we'll get more into this um, in a little bit when we get into creating it. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so then I'm gonna go to next again and I'm gonna publish because I think this is great. And then this is now gonna show up as my own activity. Um, it will show that it was actually by Dan Meyer. Love Dan Meyer, he does our three act math. Um, but it was edited with love by myself and Desmos. So now I can um, share that out with my, with my uh, students. So that was a lot. We did finding an activity um, that we wanted. Again, you can search here. You can look at the collections. You can type in any word here. You can actually also go out to Google and just search Desmos activity, blah, blah, blah. Um, this one thing I wanted to talk to you about real quick is um, Desmos has people that work for them, which they do, Dan Meyer does work for Desmos, um, that create these activities, but so do lots of other people. And we're going to talk about how you can create your own activity here in just a few minutes. Um, so we did finding activities. Um, we did copying and editing with our snowman, um, if you wanted to. Uh, take out slides or add slides. So we did that. Um, and then let's now go back and just look at all the stuff you have on here. Again, here's directions to that. Um, this is a video of what I just did. 
So if you want to go back and look at the steps that we just did, I made, this has no audio to it. It's literally the steps we just did. So you can share that um, or you can um, go back and look at that later. And now that I've got my classroom activity, now we want to share it with students. So students will go to student.desmos.com, okay? And um, if your students have never done it before, you wanna make sure you put some instructions. Um, if you want me to make some instructions for you, I, will, I would love to do that, that you could just copy and paste into your Google Classroom or um, Edmodo or whatever you're using for your LMS, or if you just wanna email it out to your, to your students. Um, so I wanna show you just real quick how you can get that class code for them to set up. I do suggest that you set up different codes for each class. It kind of keeps it more organized in terms of if you wanna make that a formative assessment, but if you don't wanna worry about that and just have all your kids in one, um, then just make one. It might be easier for you that way too, okay? Um, so to do that, I'm gonna go back to my teacher.desmos.com and, um, oops, let me get out of that one. I got lots of things going on there. Oops. Let me share my screen again, sorry. <laughs> I deleted this out of there. Um, so let me go back here. Okay, so here's my marble slides that I made, and now I wanna share that with my class. So it's as easy as going to class, create class code, and now I did it like it's done. So this is the code that you uh, would share with them. Um, when you want to share the code, you can just tell it to them. You can actually um, click on this and it will get your teacher dashboard going, which you can get out and get in anytime. But this is what I like is it produces this nice um, slide that you could snip if you want with a snipping tool or use your Mac control shift four to copy and paste that or again you can just give them the six digit code and letter code or if you want to share the link you can actually copy and paste the link there um, and so I'm going to close out of that so now I can share that with my students um, and then I can just click right out of here okay. Oops. all right so now I've got that going um, I can go back and look at it anytime. So let's say I create it, I share it out and it's due next week. But let's say this Friday, I wanna check and see how many um, students have gotten into it. So I'm gonna go to my history tab and I can look at that activity. If I put it in a collection or I didn't, um, I, can, I can do that at any time. I'm gonna click on this and it's gonna bring me back kind of to my teacher dashboard um, so I can see what progress they've made. Um, and there's that again, but you would actually see um, the students over here. So now I wanna to talk to you about kind of what that feedback looks like um, in the time we have left. Um, so again, you can make multiple class codes, you share those out with your students and they can join at any time. Um, again, make sure to include directions if you don't have it and you want them to sign in with their student school email and password. They would do the same thing you did to create a teacher.desmos.com account. They wanna sign in, they don't have to create an account um, and it'll put their name automatically in there. So um, make sure to, to use that. If you don't, you won't be able to see, um, you wouldn't know who it was if they tried to create their own account, so. And this is actually- question? Oh yeah, go ahead. Um, so, can you talk me to through how I would put this into like a Canvas or Google Classroom course so that we can show how that would work? Like, would you just share the? Yeah, you would just share the link. I would literally just go to um, my Google Classroom and create an assignment called Desmos Activity or, you know, um, yeah, I mean, maybe Desmos Activity and then put a due date on it. Um, I would do the same thing in Canvas. I, I haven't looked at how to embed, if you can embed. Um, I know you can embed the calculator in, but I haven't seen yet or looked at yet how to embed a classroom activity into Canvas or Google Classroom. Um, and I don't know if that feature is actually work, if that works. So I would try to make it as simple as you can right now, which is just to share the link out. 
So the best way would be post uh, the instructions on your Google Classroom or Canvas page that direct them to your Desmos and then you can yeah. have them complete that assignment inside of there instead of doing an assignment in Google Classroom. Yes. Yep. Got it. Okay. Yeah. And then you would see, then you would go to teacher.desmos.com to see the results. You would not go to the, to the um, Google Classroom or Canvas. Yeah. But I'll look into that for you guys. So um, this is what's neat too. This is what the student looks at when they get back in. Um, and it'll show you their, their recent activity. So they can click on to see feedback. If you put, if you say, I, I'm giving feedback, um, they can go back in and click on their activity. So they have an account just like, just like we do. Um, so let me go over really quickly before um, we have to go um, what the teacher dashboard, um, the different input it gives you. Because now that you have put this activity out there and they've done it, well, what kind of feedback do you get so that you can see um, if they did it correctly, if they need help um, or need feedback from you, um, and how would that translate into like a formative grade? So there's two basic views in that teacher dashboard that we already looked at, summary view and teacher view. Um, the snapshots in the student view, again, wouldn't be necessary at this point to get feedback um, to you. Um, the summary view is gonna give you feedback like who's logged in, um, where are they right now, um, are they further ahead behind than you thought if you gave them that activity um, as you know during a Google Meet or Zoom or even during the week, um, which is good to know, like are we giving our students too much work or not? Um, and then what were questions were particularly easy or challenging? And this is where that teacher guide would come in handy for you to take notes and have um, kind of a printed version of that um, handy while you're looking through the summary view. Um, and then these are the symbols. So this in that summary view, um, which uh, looks like, let's see, I can get back to it. Now I've got too many windows open. <laughs> oh, don't do new share. So I think it's in the way. Um, let me go to my history. Let me show you real quick. So we did this one. So I go back in just like I did go to history and now I can look, this is um, my summary view. So now what do all these little dots mean? Um, and so depending on the question um, and the feedback that you ask for, um, like uh, you can see in different activities, um, the dash means that there's no work. It's just something for them to read. Um, then the check means everything on the screen is correct. So if you put in an answer um, and a key to it, or it has an answer, um, like place for them to answer like a multiple choice, there's different things to answer, which we'll look at in a minute. But if it, it's correct and you provided an answer key to it, it will um, give you a check mark. And then the dot means that this just needs your own interpretation, kind of like an open response where you would have multiple right answers um, or you're asking for their um, feeling or whatever, that, that's the dot. So that's why you saw all those dots on mine is I was just asking for kind of your feedback and there wasn't a wrong answer. Um, the X means that something's incorrect. Again, there would have to be some kind of answer key associated to it. And then a warning, which I didn't even know existed means um, it's not merely incorrect, but something might have been misunderstood. So I have never seen the warning, but um, the, again, that would depend on the type of question that you asked. Um, again, if you're watching in real time during a Zoom or a Meet, you could watch them do it just like I did while you were doing it um, and, and watching in real time. I think that would be kind of neat interaction. Um, and then the teacher view is um, a view for each slide, um, like we kind of looked at after you guys were done with that beginning activity, um, that is an individual or a summary view. Um, this would answer how you did on the questions and what answers were most common. Um, so you get, can get that kind of feedback. So um, that's the teacher view um, where you can kind of go in and look at all those responses, especially if you have um, open response items that you want to look at. 
Um, and then this is the written feedback where you can give feedback to the students. Um, and that has to be turned on. So that's a beta feature again, like I mentioned before. Um, and what you'd have to do to get that turned on is you click on this link right here, teacher.desmos.com backslash labs. And this um, will bring you to back into your account and you just click on written feedback. This is also where you can enable features to use an activity builder. So if you're interested in creating your very own activities um, or even editing, doing more editing, like Mr. Rayburn asked before about um, what kind of different things you can do with the editing feature, I would check all these because it'll let you make your own marble slides. Um, computational layer is actually their programming language, which I haven't learned yet. Um, this is where you could embed geometry tools into your activity builder, um, which is new, and also then the written feedback. So um, you do have to turn on that written feature, but all you have to do is click that box and then you'll see that comment tab in the student view of your of um, your activity when they when they turn in answers. All right, I got some more questions for you. Okay, go. Um, for students to see the feedback, do they need the code again or is it in their history? It, it'll be in their history when they get back on to um, when they get back into student.teacher.com, it'll actually show them their recent activities here or they can see all activities. Yeah. And it and, has the date they did it to. Um, and then also in the chat box, it, it, there are some, Ronnie has been posting some of the ones that they have created. So oh, great. there Thanks, are some Ronnie. ones that are in there. And cool. Um, yeah. Cool. So we have about three minutes left, two minutes left. Okay. I am going to just leave this here. Um, if you do want to create your own slides, um, either from already existing activities or you wanna create your own entirely, um, you go to custom activities and then new activity. And this is kind of an overview of that. Um, and you can kind of play around with things in that. If you, if you are interested in creating your activities and wanna want some help with that, um, let me know, we can create your own sessions. So. Um, so I'll get out of here now and then I'll get in the chat and um, again, if you just want to email me at susan.mcgrath and um, I'm going to put my email in here so you can just click on it. Okay, so while you're doing that, Susan, I'm going to show where I'm going to post this uh, okay. link to. Okay, so yeah. if you go to our NTI resources page for our district, um, that link is going to be right here, bit.ly slash fcpsnti, um, and it's all lowercase, so that's where you will find it. Then you're going to click on teacher resources and other online tools. And if you scroll down, scroll down a little bit, right here is the presentation slide for Susan's site. Um, and then also there will be one that says video, which will have the link from this video to be posted onto that site as soon as we're finished with this meeting. Um, it should be up there within the next hour or two hours. Great. So, well, Susan, I appreciate this. Um, thank you. And again, tomorrow, looking at our schedule, it's at the same time um, with Susan and I. We're going to be here again tomorrow at 1.30. Susan's doing all the work. I just get to listen and enjoy um, <laughs> all the work that she's been informing me about because I had no clue about any of this. Um, and so she'll be back here tomorrow at 1.30. It is a different link, so you will have to sign up with a different link to do that and you can find that on our website as well. Thank you everybody for coming out and we hope to see you tomorrow. Have Bye a good everyone. one. Bye everyone, stay safe.